this pandemic has, has forced everybody, um, regardless of the industry you're in, to revisit your, um, your strategy and to put digital in the forefront. Some people want to do everything online solely and never talk to somebody. Some people want to only talk to somebody and some people want to do a combination of both. So it's allowing the customer, in, in our case, to buy uh, their, you know, the vehicle the mm -hmm. way they want to. So we like say, buy your car your way. And we mean that and I think that is a major part of it. You know, if data doesn't give you any information, it's effectively worthless. Mm -hmm. And what information it presents to you is based on the objective you go in with in terms of what you want to find. So any analytics platform you would go into, you must go in really with a question. Yeah. What do you want to find out? Otherwise, you'll find yourself sifting through numbers and numbers and numbers, mm. not taking anything in, not gaining any sort of value insights out of it. Mm. And that's where you find yourself burning money on resource, on technology you don't necessarily need. Yeah. By taking that step back and understanding what the objective is, that's where you can be most efficient with your marketing spend. Hello and welcome back to the Armchair Show. I think we'll start the show slightly differently this time and we'll do it with a cheers because it's the first time we've had beers on the show and it's <laughs> Friday and the sun's out, so why not? So cheers to our guests. Cheers. cheers. We have Warren from Infinity, we have Owen from Pendragon and Kim from Pendragon as well. How are you doing, guys? Very good. More relaxed nice, now. Fine, a sunny day out there. It is, yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? And um, how's, your, how's your day been today at the Armchair Show? Have you enjoyed it, Kim? Oh, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Everybody's been great. We've given you the kind of quintessential English experience, haven't we? Oh, this is amazing. The property is beautiful. <laughs> company is great. Hard to complain. Beer yeah, in hand. Absolutely. Can't get any better, can it? Um, a fair bit to cover today, guys. We're going to really focus in on digital transformation. Um, I'm going to ask a really, really simple question first. I think I'll throw this one to Owen. Um, is the industry as a whole embracing digital transformation? Um, if you asked me six months ago, I'd probably say no, not necessarily. If you ask me this today, which you are, then yeah, I think so. Uh, I think it's not necessarily willingness. I think it's just the forceful uh, position we find ourselves in now that obviously the year we've had has forced a lot of businesses to rethink how they uh, propose their digital offering to the customers uh, yeah. and how they look after them online. Yeah. Is it fair to say, Kim, that it's kind of pushed companies in a direction much quicker than they perhaps wanted to? Absolutely. I think it was something that was always talked about. Um, it was in the future. One day we'll get there. Uh, this pandemic has, has forced everybody, um, regardless of the industry you're in, to revisit your um, your strategy and to put digital in the forefront. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask this question. I've asked it a couple of times, and I think uh, it's, it's interesting the different answers that we get, but they're all linked. But what is, what is digital transformation, Warren? What, what's your definition of it? Uh, I guess within our particular business, it's around uh, you know, that whole customer journey, whether that's the acquisition of a customer, uh, through the you know the life cycle of a customer uh, in terms of being a repeat buyer or um, the after sales service that they're looking for, yeah. uh, and then for me it's about being able to own uh, every facet of it and build a uh, complete 360 de uh, degree view of the customer through the way they interact, with, you know, through emails, through the website, um, ads that they click on, content that they're consuming, yep. queries they're uh, they're raising. So that would that would for me would be capture that. Yeah, and Owen, uh, it's in your job title, so obviously it's, um, you know all about it. Um, how does digital transformation impact the way consumers buy cars? Uh, it, it's what one angle is, is how we communicate to, to customers. So in terms of what we put in front of consumers or customers, uh, that's one uh, side of things. One thing I just wanted to, to go off the back of what Warren just said, digital transformation, one thing that can't be ignored is the reporting elements of it as well. One thing is offering something to a customer, but the second is how we report on uh, our activities as a marketing team and also as a business as well. And I think it's bypassed quite a lot when it comes to the term digital transformation. Mm. It isn't necessarily about what you put in front of a customer in terms of, it's also about the technology you use in, in a business yeah. and report on success and fail metrics as well. Yeah, would you agree with that, Kim? I do. Um, you know, we're part of our focus is uh, decision making and data driven decision making. So it's very challenging mm -hmm. to um, make decisions, the correct decisions, if you don't have data behind it uh, supporting those decisions. So, absolutely, I think it it's encompasses all of that. Yeah. Um, and allowing the customer uh, to dictate how they want to purchase yeah. um, or how they want to interact with you. Um, some people want to do everything online solely and never talk to somebody. Some people want to only talk to somebody, and some people want to do a combination of both. So it's allowing the customer, in, in our case, to buy uh, 
their, you know, the vehicle the mm. way they want to. So we like say, buy your car your way. And we mean that. And I think that is uh, a major part of it. Yeah, a lot of that comes down to data, doesn't it? And uh, I would guess that a few people watching this might be thinking, it sounds great, but what, what tech is needed for this? You know, what kind of technology do we have to invest in to firstly get that data and then do something with it? Um, I know, Warren, we spoke a little while ago, didn't we, about uh, the amount, the sheer amount of data that's being collected, but possibly not being used and not at the fault of the business. They, they get it, it sits in a, in a database and they don't do anything with it. Um, what should they be doing, Warren? What, what's the first thing you should do if you know that you've got the data, but you're not doing it, you, you're very conscious that it's just sitting on a computer somewhere? Uh, I, I guess uh, you, you just need to be conscious of the value. I guess just because you've got the data, uh, you can become very busy, in mm. our opinion, mm. uh, looking for trends in the data. Uh, and actually, the, those trends don't exist, but you'll convince yourself through uh, analysis of the data. I guess one of the challenges we would always put is, what's the data you can't see? Yep. Uh, and therefore, how do you, uh, how do you fill the gaps in? Uh, and that's why, again, we talk about trying to bring together the different data sources. So yep. you're not just getting a single view. Actually, we need to try and get a three, four dimensional view. Uh, mm. Now, all of a sudden, you'll, you'll, you'll get to see the gaps. Um, so yeah, that's that been my view. Yeah, is this expensive? It sounds like a, they've got to spend a lot of money, Owen, to, to get to this stage. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you just need to be smart uh, with the, your, your, the money you have available to spend as a team. Mm. Um, you can go and invest a hell of a lot of money in technology, uh, in acquiring people who yep. have certain skill sets. But if you don't have a clear objective in terms of what you're going to use that technology for, what you can use those people for with a certain skill set, you find yourself wasting money. If mm. you're smarter, if you're a little bit more shrewd in terms of your marketing spend and have that clear objective from the start, yep. you can do it quite efficiently. And interesting, the question you just asked Warren is um, data. You know, People have mountains of data and companies have mountains of data that they're sitting on. Yep. How I've always described data is it's one thing, but it's... It's information. You know, if data doesn't give you any information, it's effectively worthless. Mm. And what information it presents to you is based on the objective you go in with in terms of what you want to find. So any analytics platform you would go into, you must go in really with a question. Yeah. What do you want to find out? Otherwise, you'll find yourself sifting through numbers and numbers and numbers, mm. not taking anything in, not gaining any sort of value insight out of it. Mm. And that's where you find yourself burning money on resource, on technology you don't necessarily need. Yeah. By taking that step back and understanding what the objective is, that's where you can be most efficient with your marketing spend. Yeah, and in your experience in, in this industry, what, what kind of objectives have you seen people set? Have you got any examples that we could perhaps give people? Yeah, uh, so when, when we use any sort of analytics platform, we need to go in the question. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same question all the time, but they often are the same. The question we always get asked from our directors is, if we're putting marketing spend by behind X campaign, how many cars are we selling out of it? What's the revenue line out of it? Yeah. So we can go in and try and piece together an answer for that. And that's the holy grail that's what we're always working towards achieving that insight. But it won't stop there. We will also then go and look for lifetime value. As we, we spoke about earlier, the complexity of a car purchase is, is really intense. Mm. And that's just the car purchase. Then there's the maintenance after it and the different interactions that customer can have with the business over the next 10 years. Yeah. So ideally, what we would like to do is get to the stage where we can report back on a user's lifetime value, a customer's lifetime value to us, rather than it just being that one-off interaction. So again, these are sort of objectives we will set ourselves. Yeah. How much is Joe Blogs worth to this business and how can we enhance their journey with us going forward as well? Yeah. A lot of this is about connecting the dots between offline and online as well, isn't it? And um, Kim, what's your thoughts on that? How, how do you create a consistent experience between, you know, if you start your journey looking at a car, perhaps on a YouTube video, yeah. what point when you enter the dealership, should it be, how should that feel? Uh, so it should be ideally, I think it's coined the Apple experience, yeah. um, is what everybody's striving to go to or, or get to. Um, and it starts with communication, which is very simple. It's communicating to the team to make sure you're all, to Owen's point, going in one goal or one direction. You have one goal. Um, and it's communicating to your uh, staff on site, your associates on site, to make sure that they also know what the customer expects. And it's communicating appropriately to the customers and setting proper expectations. Yep. Um, but yeah, ideally, what we're looking to uh, do seamlessly is have that experience translate from online into the store um, and then after the purchase for the customer life cycle yeah. for the servicing of the vehicle and hopefully for the purchasing and selling of that vehicle back to us and purchasing your next car with yeah. us. Yeah, because like you say, it's that loyalty thing, isn't it? It goes on, it has to keep... It's a customer-centric, you know, focus is, is to how you get to all that. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the, the um, popular fruit-based company uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. um, is that why we're hearing the term product geniuses even in the, in automotive as well, do you think, is Warren? 
Is he nodding away there? Um, I, I think it is, right? But I guess it does come back to, uh, you know, uh, the things we were discussing over lunch. People buy from people. Yeah. Um, and therefore really building that uh, rapport and that relationship. Uh, you know, a, a car is, a, uh, you know, in its very literal form is, is, is four wheels and they come in different shape, shapes and sizes and, you know, and price is often a determining factor having chosen the, the model. So why would you choose one uh, dealer? Okay, there's many reasons proximity and location but I guess that that trend in our opinion has changed over a substantial period of time yeah uh, and therefore really starting to understand that customer over uh, and really build that rapport with the customer yeah uh, over the over the lifetime which as you say it should amount to several purchases yep well that neatly brings us to the what's now called the contactless car purchase which is a phrase I never thought I'd ever <laughs> use I don't think anything any of us did really but it's a thing now isn't it is it fair to say that it's definitely yeah there's oh, people yeah. out there now buying cars without even mm -hmm. touching or looking at it we, we launched it um, right as COVID started um, was that planned beforehand or was it something you accelerated with, with COVID it was it was discussed beforehand it was laid out it was highly accelerated um, yeah. with the institution of the, the lockdowns and, and that. And what did you learn from that accelerated process? Because I imagine that was a pretty stressful time for you. Um, yeah, it really was. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What, what, what could you kind of tell the audience about what you learned there? What were the key, key learnings? I think one of the key learnings is you can't force customers to buy a car the way you want them to buy a car. You have to listen to your customers. Um, obviously, during lockdown, customers who wanted to purchase were forced in a certain way to buy completely contactless. Um, and then, you know, it developed to click and collect and, and, and they have different different ways. But I think the takeaway is stepping back from all of it is that you can't force a customer to, to purchase the car the way you want them to. You have no. to listen and respond to your customers and allow them to um, dictate how they want to communicate with you, whether it be phone, internet, chat, or phone, email, chat, I'm sorry, um, however you choose to do it. Yeah, great advice. What about yourself, Owen? What was your experience from that? Yeah, and similar to what Kim was saying, I think we were forced into, or customers were forced into interact with businesses just online during the uh, lockdown period. Yep. And, you know, I think we always has a, we, we always assumed that customers wouldn't actually go back to dealerships once uh, this period was to ease off, which has obviously happened. We know some other businesses have gone completely on an online business model, which has changed for them yep. uh, in, recent, uh, in recent months. And it goes back to two things, the complexity of the product itself, the trust that a customer has within a vehicle purchase in the business they're dealing with. To do it all online is a big ask, is a huge ask. And like we have got people purchasing cars directly on the on, on the website. We have uh, provisions in place to make sure that they're comfortable with the vehicle once they receive it. Yeah. But again, sometimes that isn't enough. And mm -hmm. the majority of our customers still transact with us in a dealership environment mm -hmm. as well. And um, in terms of the challenge over the last uh, a few months, it relates to that. We didn't really know what was going to happen uh, yeah. after lockdown. We didn't even know how long lockdown was going to last for, to, yeah. be, to be honest. It was very unclear, wasn't it? It, to be honest. It, it was and obviously the strains on the business uh, from the operation side of things during that period as well but also from a digital perspective as well we are effectively a customer's research sort of uh, that's it, resource yeah. during that lockdown period yeah. which allows them to understand what they want to purchase when lockdown does end because yeah. it's uncertain for everyone else we didn't know how long we were being solely for that purpose and when we can start becoming a more of a transactional sort of offering for customers post lockdown yeah you had to be very dynamic didn't you I guess during that time uh, was it the same for you guys Laura? yeah I guess and, and that's true you know that's very evident in the data I guess when you look at visitor volumes to uh, automotive websites across the period then mm. volumes were as high if not you know substantially higher than we'd seen before uh, but actually the conversions or, or the goals you said in terms of um, you know, calls into the dealership or form fields were considerably less than we'd seen before. Yeah. Uh, that trend has certainly reversed since you know, June, July time uh, mm -hmm. and then continued at some pace through the period. September has been an uh, incredibly strong trading month. And so you know, whilst we thought it was the, the V-shaped dip with a strong recovery, uh, actually, that was a very sharp uh, recovery, but, but actually we've seen that sustained yeah. uh, across our portfolio uh, uh, and up until right up until today that's that's really positive isn't it i think keeping that positive it's, it's nice to keep things positive at the moment <laughs> um from from your point of view guys um what do you think the op the opportunities are post lockdown so once we're we, we, you know we will get beyond this um stage at, at some point but what, what have you learned during the lockdown period kim that you think will be taken forward into next year and beyond um well i think there's a few things i think that um Customer centric. I know I've said it a couple times, but I think that is a, a huge focus. And I think companies have to really, um, not just in the automotive sector, all companies really have to take a look at how they communicate with their customers yep. and how they serve their customers. So I think customers um, have increased 
expectations yep. going forward. Um, and I think that's appropriate. And I think that's something that um, we need to take with us. Um, I think how we, uh, you know, currently with the, the V shape that um, Warren had just mentioned, I think that we're in an interesting time right now. We have not to make it less positive, but we have um, the furlough scheme coming to an end. Yep. We have Brexit up. Um, we have a lot of um, unknowns in the future. The one thing with our economy and unknowns, what we see in the car sector is obviously focus on used cars, which has been happening, pre-owned vehicles. So um, how we continue to uh, offer those to customers and also how we work with the OEMs to market the new vehicles, which are it, right now taking a backseat with uncertain times. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Warren, what, what do you think can be learned from lockdown? Um, I agree with what Kim said around being customer centric. I guess in, in, in our own business, we work across a number of different uh, verticals. We've got five uh, primary verticals that are important to us. Uh, that gives us uh, some, some diversity so we get to understand you know, what, what does dealers look like in uh, you know, other B2B and other B2C businesses and, and, and start to bring that information back. Uh, for us is you know, definitely looking to evolve the product. Um, and make it even more tailored uh, to those specific uh, industry verticals um, is it, super important, including the terminology uh, that we use within our own existing business. Yep. Um, I think there's other challenges as you know, we've seen you know, um, social networks and video play an even more important role um, and therefore actually being able to ensure that uh, we're able to harness the data and the insights that's coming out of those platforms as well uh, and ingest that to give this single view of the customer is going to be super important. So that's a real focus area for us. Definitely. And, and kind of just quickly honing in on the social side of things, what, what kind of data should, they, should dealerships be particularly paying attention to? Because again, social networks throw out an awful lot of data, don't they? Um, <laughs> Yeah, Where I mean, should they start? I guess we're starting to see, you know, Facebook demand a greater share of purse, yep. um, uh, you know, uh, uh, and in particular because of the video content that's attached to it, and clearly uh, with Instagram network as well, then clearly there's a, there's a lot more social sharing and posts uh, there as well. Um, so we're seeing that as a, as a key area um, for growth. Obviously, uh, you know, Google are responding uh, through YouTube and putting a lot of uh, emphasis uh, around content that's served on YouTube. So for us, as I said, a big focus around how uh, tracking all of that data together. Yep. Um, the walled gardens, you know, give, create the opportunity for service providers such as ourselves uh, to be able to present that single view rather than see that sit across different analytics tools. Yeah. Uh, Owen, in, in terms of act actionable data, like uh, the sort of data Warren's been explaining, what, how would you add to that? What, what kind of things should they be tracking? Um, so for us at Pendragon, we've got a number of goals that we will track and they track uh, customers doing certain things at different stages of the buying cycle. Yep. So the big thing for us is to understand where customer, certain segments of customer are, what will we learn from them and then how long it takes them to get to the next stage. For example, if they were to purchase a car, without being too obvious, how long is it going to take them to get to a service stage, uh, yep. when they require an MOT, etc. Which is obviously usually, usually signposted on a map, yep. but we know when that's going to be. Mm. But prior to the car purchase, that's where it's a little bit messy, a little bit more complicated. Okay. So some customers will start their research phase within two weeks of purchased a car, some will start their research phase, and then two months down the line they've purchased a car. Right, so we okay. need to get an understanding in terms of where to intercept certain segments at their journey, mm. and when it's going to be most impactful. This goes back to the question regarding spend, you know, how do we become more efficient? Yep. Use that data to inject our spend at certain and most appropriate level, uh, points yep. during that journey. And it's not the same for everyone. So that's where it gets a little bit complicated, and that's where we move into like, so your programmatic marketing, mm. which uses various different data sources to deliver ads at the most right time, from the right people uh, in the right tone. So yeah, yeah it, 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 the, it's about amalgamating all those different data sources to paint a certain picture. Yeah, it's uh, like you say, I think when, when you put it like that, it, it sounds much simpler. It's jumping in at the right point, isn't it? It's appearing in front of that customer just at the moment they're more likely to engage with you as a brand. Um, I think like with a lot of the things we've covered on this, I think it, it all sounds great, but I, again, I think as far as the, the listeners and view, viewers are concerned, they are gonna be sitting there thinking, still don't know where to get started. So I think to kind of round off, um, if I can put you on the spot and just ask you for one piece of advice you give people in terms of where to go with digital transformation. So if we take a dealership, they've used the same system for the last 20 years. There's a lot of those out there. They perhaps have systems that aren't interconnected. Uh, we did an a, a episode recently where it became very clear about how many systems are out there and how mm -hmm. few of them are interconnected, which I think for a lot of industries and probably a lot of the, uh, the verticals you work with, Warren, sure. is probably a bit foreign. Um, but it's not in, in automotive, it's very common. Um, so they're sitting there with a, an old 
old system, old DMS, for, for example. Um, they've got Twitter accounts, etc. Where do they start? Because, as we know, it's been a very, very tough six months for the industry, um, and it's why we have this show. We get you guys on, you knowledgeable people. We'd love to know what you could, what advice you could give them. So, Kim, where, 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 where do they start? What's the first thing they can do? Uh, uh, piggyback off what Owen said earlier, ask the question, what are you looking for? Um, are you looking for w specific information? Are you looking for all your information in one place? Yep. Um, are you looking for a less expensive, a more expensive, you know, what are you looking for? What are, and then what are the parameters and build back from there? And then based on what you come to, um, you can decide if there's one platform or one tool that you need or if there's a few tools that you need. Yep. But you have to start with the question, what you're looking for, and then build from there. Yeah, because without that question, you're just flying solo, aren't you? And that's why I think in the space we have a lot of what we do with the disjointed <laughs> is because somebody told us we need this. Yeah. So you jump on something just because someone else is doing it without Absolutely. a goal, basically. Absolutely. That's great advice. Uh, Warren, what would your advice be? Uh, I guess for me it would be uh, try but fail fast. Um, so I, I think the temptation is to overanalyze and spend a long time uh, considering things and putting together a business case. Uh, and then we decide to run a business case for three months, six months, 12 months, and then we conclude it didn't work. Mm. I, I think what, what life has taught us in more recent times is that the pace of change is considerable. Uh, and therefore, by the time you've actually designed it, it's probably been superseded or, or needs to be amended. Yep. Um, and, and that's certainly the way we, you know, we've grown up as a business. You know, we, we solved our own problem, which was fantastic, uh, you know, at the start. But now we're trying to solve other problems. So, you know, for us, we're getting much more into, um, you know, creating proof of concept. So we don't spend weeks, months, uh, you know, potentially even years building a product that's complete, uh, yeah. and then only to realise that actually there is no market for it because the market's moved on in it's that period moved. of time. We we need the sort of proof of concept. So, you know, my my piece of advice would be trial, uh, try. But as I said, fail fast. Don't convince yourself that it's the right thing to do. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. Just go Absolutely. for it, basically. Yeah, I think that's a Google phrase, isn't it? Break, <laughs> does it break things or something like that? Isn't it? They've, they've broken a lot of things in fairness. So. Um, <laughs> Owen, what about yourself? Um, if, for me, it's uh, quite simple. Um, I think rather than inject yourself at the bottom of the, 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 the user journey and uh, try and get the sale mm. uh, when you need it, uh, change your objectives as a dealership group. You know, change your objective to be handhold the customer throughout the whole journey. Understand the journey, map it out as you want it to be as a business, think about what they want, and then measure with different micro goals all the way throughout. Don't just focus on sales revenue because that's a fantastic goal and that's what keeps your business afloat. Mm. But you won't achieve that goal unless you hit all the micro goals on the way. Yeah. You know, you need to handle that customer throughout the journey. So yeah. the first thing is map out the journey. The second thing is measure it with micro goals. And then the third thing is talk to people who you've got confidence in to provide you the right technology, the right reporting platforms, yeah. who can tell you how to target these customers accurately. Because the danger is, uh, I've spoke to a lot of people, especially in my time as an agency, where companies have invested in technology mm recklessly yeah. they spend a lot of money they don't know how to use it they don't know what insights they're getting out of it and then they find themselves stuck in a hole yeah get a partner you can trust yep. if you if you aren't educated in the position to actually to invest in technology or people and then let them do a bit of work for you in terms of helping you map out what that tech set looks like and yep. how your measurement uh, uh, model looks like afterwards as well yeah what great advice even over beers as well so um <laughs> as you say start with a goal fail fast as you, as you mentioned and then just really focus on mapping that journey I think that's some brilliant advice. We could go on, guys, but um, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up there, which does mean we'll have to bring you on again at some stage. So <laughs> we really appreciate that. Um, have you all enjoyed the, the show today? Have you enjoyed the experience at the Armchair show? This is great. Yeah. Absolutely. Like we always say, it's not a normal day's work. It's um, it's, it's just good fun, really. Um, and, the, the, yeah, we, we talk about uh, yeah, helping our audience learn, prosper and grow. And that's exactly why we get you on, because you guys have been there, you've done it, you're still doing it now, and you're learning an awful lot. So we appreciate your giving your, your advice to the audience as well. No, Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm not going to do an outro because you can't see me on that monitor with the, with the sun. Uh, but we'll just finish by doing a cheers, I think. So cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Thanks very much. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, indeed. Armchair. Welcome to